so I can get this thing bolted into the car. I mean, how hard could it be? Into this car, and to do that, I'm gonna have to make a fabricating mounts to mount this Porsche 996 transmission into this, uh, what is this car? Fabricating engine mounts for this Hello and welcome back to Wrench. On today's episode, I'm going to attempt to start fabricating mounts to mount this Porsche G96 transmission. Come on, just get the words out, man. This Porsche G96. Uh... Hey, and welcome back to Wrench. On today's episode, we are going to begin the process of mounting this Porsche G96 transmission into this 1969 911 blasphemy build. <laughs> If you are brand new to the channel, welcome all new viewers. If you haven't seen any of the videos, this is video number 21 of this series where I've taken this 1969 911S that was a wide body, crazy fiberglass GT2 race car and I'm converting it back into this street car techno mod. There are three things I wanna talk about before I get started today. Number one, I'm wearing it. These are new swag from the Wrench store, including the brand spanking new Blasphemy Build t-shirt. So we got the uh, Wrench logo on the side. We've got Blasphemy Build on the sleeve here. And then we've got the Blasphemy outline. And you can see this cool little lip here. We don't know what that is yet, but you will soon find out. And uh, Porsche in Japanese, since I'm putting this Subaru flat six into this Porsche 911 S uh, and I've got the new wrench hat. These are all uh, made to order so you can order them. They will drop ship them to you from wherever. Uh, this is a black one. It also comes in camo and this shirt is in gray and there's a bunch more at uh, wrench.com slash store. Second, I finished the floors. So I finished the floor on this side of the garage and it is absolutely gorgeous. It's not without its imperfections and I'm hoping that Rust-Oleum will make it right for me. I will show you guys maybe more in depth if I do my garage remodel three video, but we will leave that as it is now. It's still great. It's still better than lying around on unfinished concrete. Finally, esteemed automotive artist Nicholas Hunsaker has come out with a whole line of neck gaiters and face masks. Here are a smattering of them. So we've got Houndstooth. This one's super cool. We've got this one, which is RSR. It's what I wore to my cars and coffee today. In fact, it still smells a little bit like gasoline. We've got this one, which is Houndstooth in a face mask form. We've got this one, which I believe is the 911 ST. And finally, I have this one which is the famous pink pig. Now these things are so cool. They will be awesome at any cars and coffee you go to. They wash really well and they're really comfortable. So it's the kind of mask you can wear for a really long time. They don't kind of tickle your whiskers if you have any. And uh, I really like them. So I've linked them up in the description below if you guys want to check out these really cool Porsche masks. This is just a fraction of the different designs that he has. So there are a ton of them at Nicholas's store linked in the description uh, below. So the first thing I have to do before I do anything is level this car. I need to get it up on jack stands and I need to get it level side to side and front to back. For that I bought this very fancy level uh, from Empire. Digital level and very inspired as many of you are by uh, Bad Obsession Motorsports make the noise. So this is a digital level that if I get the thing right it goes beep and it will be level. So I need to do that. This chassis, as you can see here, was already cored out and can accommodate a direct bolt-in of a Porsche G50 transmission. Now my G96 doesn't mount the same way and I have to figure out how to modify what's already there. But the plan is to get the car up on jack stands, get it level, slide the engine and transmission underneath line up the axles so they are in line with the wheels. I'll probably pull the wheels off and then just sort of see where I am, see where the tongue is of the transmission 
and how close it is to what's already there. So I need to basically see, do I cut off what's already there? Do I make my own? Do I use the existing Porsche G96 cradle? Like there's all these questions I don't know the answer to yet. So we're gonna figure that out on this episode. Let's go do it. got a bunch of washers here and what I'm gonna do is go around try to level the car out and once I have it relatively leveled uh, well once I have it leveled, not even relatively leveled it has to be level then I'm gonna kind of get in underneath pull the wheels off and size up what the transmission looks like uh, fore and aft you know I'm gonna line the axles up and then see what my forward mounting looks like. If I can use some of the existing fabrication, I will, but uh, I have no idea until I actually get under there. So, but for now, I'm gonna mess around with the jack a little bit, mess around with these washers, except that one, which is now like in another continent. It's still going. Um, mess around with the washers, make sure I have this thing fully level this way, this way, and moving on. <laughs> We are underneath and you can see the fabrication that was done before this whole section up here is meant to accommodate the g50 transmission and not the g96 but there's actually still some threads let me see if i can get under with the camera and show you guys kind of what's going on under there so you can see that the transmission has these this is a, a rubber surround it's pretty cracked i might have to replace that but uh, it's got a couple of bolt holes, so it's, it swings independently. And then I've got these two holes. They're not very deep. They're only about a half inch deep, so I don't know if they can accommodate like a full transmission mount. But what I wanna do here is sort of get the axles in line with each other. You can see I have a little bit forward to go. It looks to me like the nose cone here is gonna come right to the edge of the body by the time this thing ends up getting straight. We have about, I don't know, maybe three or four inches forward before uh, it gets to where it's gotta be. So I put a post in here. If I go center to center, and mind you guys, I've never done anything like this before, so I'm just kind of winging it. But if I go center to center, the axle would hit the springs. So I think what I have to do is, I'm gonna have to sort of angle down that way so that they sort of sit in the right spot. Okay, so I have a little engineering problem here. I've got the engine and transmission bolted together. They are sitting on this super cheap cart from Harbor Freight and it ain't going well. It is absolutely collapsing under its own weight. So first I've got to get it off the cart. Then I need to make some sort of custom cradle so that I can get a jack underneath the cradle. Right now, the, the whole engine's sort of sitting askew and I have no real way to lift it. So what I want to do is make like a level cradle that'll bolt into the, hopefully, uh, bolt into the, um, 
engine mounts, like the stock OEM Subaru engine mounts, but then has a nice flat level bar on the bottom. <laughs> So I've had a bit of a think between when you last saw me and now, after I've gotten this thing off the cart. And what I need is a way to lift the engine where it's always level as I lift it. And I have a parallelogram jack, meaning I have a jack that has a platform that goes up. If I can make a cradle that will bolt to the engine mounts and that cradle is level, I can use my jack, which is also level, to lift the entire unit up and it will stay where it's supposed to stay. Okay, if this is the bottom of the Subaru engine, what happens is the engine mounts are sort of like this. They're at this weird angle. What I wanna do is make a plate and that plate goes here and there's another plate here. I'm gonna make a cradle because there's all kinds of stuff here. There's like an oil pan, there's a bunch of stuff that's in the way. So what I'm gonna do is, is take some square stock that I have, and I've got my engine plates. I'm gonna make angles like this. So this will be my cradle, and this whole part will stay level. Now what's cool about this is this is great practice for me to learn about how to make a cradle because I need to make a cradle for the car anyway. So this is sort of a way to do it without any major penalty and I can see what my fabrication shops look like these days. Okay, I've got my contraption here and I've gotten rid of the ghetto ass cart that was under there. So now the engine is, believe it or not, it is dead center level. Like it is perfectly level. I'm starting the process of building the cradle. First thing I did is made a cardboard template of the engine mount and then made them in metal. Here they are bolted in. I've got a couple pieces of square tube that I'm going to weld under here, unfortunately right now I've got, I need smaller magnets to set this thing up and make it 90 degrees than I have. So I'm gonna make a run over to Harbor Freight tomorrow morning. So it's the next day, I actually had to pick up a couple of magnets from Harbor Freight. The magnet I had was way too big for what I was doing. And uh, I thought these would be the good, these are actually the super fancy high-end magnets for like $9 from Harbor Freight. And check this out, the magazine came in, my actual magazine, there's my car. How cool is that? And then I'm in here somewhere, uh, and this is the built, not bought. Here it is, look at that. Boom, look at that, huh? It's like a full feature article. So total 9-11 this month, if you guys are in the UK, uh, yeah, it's pretty rad. Like, that's a lot of work to go into this thing, and here we are. Top tip of the day, by the way, wear coveralls. Yesterday, I just kind of worked in my shorts and, you know, whatever. Filthy, I was filthy by the end of the day. These things you can get, I'm wearing these coveralls now that are, I think I got them from like the, the recycled place, you know, like the used uniform place. You can also go to any military surplus. The flight suits and the uh, workers' coveralls are actually way better than almost anything you can buy because they're super functional. They've got really cool functional pockets. Uh, anyway, so today, a lot of what I'm gonna be doing is sort of like under, the, under this engine, so it's actually gonna be kinda of hard to shoot. But let me just tell you what the, the current scoop is. So we've got, as I mentioned before, these two motor mounts that are coming off of here. I made the plates, they are currently bolted onto the engine. Now I've got a couple of these pieces of square one inch tubing. And what I wanna do, and this is why I needed the magnet, is I want to affix these to the motor mount, right? So the motor mount, I don't know how they should be, something like this. So the motor mount is here. These things are here. I'm gonna put a little tack weld. And what I'll have then, 
what I'll have then is these two arms that are coming down this way. So then I'm going to take a piece of, I think I have like a really small, like a half inch uh, piece of square tubing. And I'm going to level it so it's perfectly level and I'm going to tack it in. So what that's going to do is it's going to locate a cross member that's going to hold these two pieces of bar together. And the reason I want to do that is that's going to keep them where they need to be in the orientation they need to be in. And then I need to figure out how I can cut them. Like, imagine this. Imagine that this thing's at some weird angle, but I need to cut straight across it. So it's not just like I can measure this way and cut it. It's that the motor mounts are sort of at a, like they're sort of fore and aft. So the angles are very complicated and I don't really understand how to do the math for that. So what I want to do is I'm going to tack a bar on so that it's this way. Then I'm basically just going to try to cut above the bar so that this thing is the right orientation, the right angle. That way I can weld something onto the bottom side. It'll all make sense once I do it. So I need to get them under there, uh, clean them up, and then give them a little squirt so they stay where they're supposed to be. And then I'll weld the cross member piece on. All right, so this is what we've got. Got the plate that I made before. Got the magnet holding this bad boy. I'm going to give this a zap with the welder, probably here and maybe there at the top, just to keep it in place. And then the other one is the same boat. So this is the bar I'm using in between. Uh, I've done, I've cut it, I've ground the edges here, and I've given it a wipe down with some acetone because there's so much schmutz that comes on these things uh, from the metal supplier. So this, I'm gonna put a tack in, I'm gonna stick the level on it. Maybe I'll stick the level on it first, just so I have it pretty close. And then I will weld this thing on, then try to remove the entire assembly so that you know I can weld the whole thing up. Okay, we've got this thing in. As you may have heard, it's level. Now I'm gonna to try to remove the entire assembly so I can properly weld up around this thing. All right, I've got this thing set up in my vise here. One cool thing about having a vise that's kind of on a portable platform. So I'm gonna weld here and here, here and here, and then I'm gonna flip it and weld the other side. All right, my camera died, but uh, I got these things welded up. I think the hardest thing for me is I have a hard time seeing. Like as I'm welding, my, my helmet either doesn't darken enough or darkens too much. But uh, once I was able to see these, I got the welds a little bit better, but they're still pretty pigeon poopy. I am, however, pretty confident that uh, it will hold. So this is kind of what I was talking about. I see the crazy angle that this thing needs to be cut. And it's not even square, like it's, it's a really weird angle. So it's like, it's gotta go straight up and down here. And then from this angle, it's this way. From this angle, it's this way. So this is really weird, but my hope now is that I can measure, or I can mark rather, I can mark this thing in a way that I can cut it with my cutting wheel and it's going to be at this really weird angle so that I can weld the big final uh, bar that's going to go across here. And then I'll have this really nice cross member. Nice is all relative, of course. It'll still look like pigeon poop welding. But I might finish it off. I don't know. I might hit it with my sander and spray it just to kind of uh, proof of concept, if you will. So I've made some marks here, and in theory, I should be able to cut this off and cut this one off and still leave the welds on the inside because they're actually going from this here. So this bottom part should be able to drop off, and my hope is that I can then weld the other bar in, also perfectly even and level, um, and then fully tack it up once I get to uh, the engine. I'm also going to have to probably slot these because Because this thing's at an angle. It's really weird to be able to try to get it to go straight up and down So I'm probably gonna have to 
uh, grind these things out so that I have a little bit of wiggle room. <laughs> So crossbar is cut. I've given it a little acetone wipe. And this is crazy, but I just popped this thing off and measured it, and it is dead level, which is bonkers. So all of this stuff that I've done, all of this fabrication over the last couple days was just to create this cradle that I could levelly, levelly? Practice? Are we talking about practice? Jack the engine up so I can put it underneath the car and actually align it to where I need to align it. So I'm going to actually attempt to do that now that this has all been created. Okay, it looks like I am getting somewhere now. Uh, let me show you kind of where I am with this. Let me get under. You can see I've got the transmission kind of up where it needs to be. And then the engine is pretty darn level. If I just sort of eyeball the distance here between the frame rail and the engine, you can see there's like a little bit of an upward tilt. But if I measure from here, that space and then that space, I think it's gonna be pretty darn close to level. So I think what I'm gonna do here, you can see that I've got threaded holes on each side. So I think I'm just gonna take first a piece of flat square bar and I'm gonna make a, uh, just a plate that goes across, kind of like a chassis type plate that's kind of a cradle. So I'm gonna start there. Okay, so check this out. I've got the bar and it's nice and bolted. Right now I've actually got the transmission sitting right on the bar, but if you see this, this is how these things bolt in. It's in between this little channel. So what I'm gonna do is next video, I'm gonna make a little cardboard template and kind of an ear that wraps down and around this bar and then has two bolts that go through it. So what this thing will effectively become is a, a cradle for the front of the transmission that will have this welded on ear, which I'll make out of pretty thick steel. And the bolts will go through the ear and then it'll get welded all the way around this bar. So then basically all I have to do then is bolt this entire unit to, uh, to the transmission and then I can just move it in here and bolt it into the bottom of the car and I'm good to go. What I need to figure out next though is exactly where these axles need to be because if you look, I'm very close to this bar. And let's assume a flange and a flange. And I don't know if the bar is gonna hit the middle or not. So that's what I need to figure out. Otherwise, I think I've figured that out and 
This spot here is a reinforcement for the roll cage and it's got like, I don't know, it's almost like a quarter inch chunk of steel here. I'll make a couple of ears that'll come off this way and they'll get welded on from this plate where I can put a bolt through this way, uh, fore and aft. And that's the bolt that will go on and hold the engine where it's gonna be. In the meantime, have a look at this. I think it looks really good. This is, I think, gonna be roughly where the engine's gonna be, you guys. The engine's relatively level in the chassis. So I have just a little bit of space here, hopefully for an intercooler, but then I have a bunch of space up front on each side of the transmission and still all kinds of room for activities, as you can see. That is how much space I have to do exhausty and turbo-y type things in here. So I'm pretty psyched. So that was multiple days of fabrication and I thought it came out great. I am really psyched. I think I'm just within a few millimeters of where this engine's going to permanently live. Right now I have to move the engine fore and aft to make sure the axles are going to fit, but once they are set, I'm gonna make the ears for the transmission and that will locate the transmission, which is super, super exciting. So after all that work, it's about 20 after six. Honestly, I think it's happy hour and there's one way to wrap up this episode.